My name is Angela. And my name is Nicole. And welcome to the Ominous Stitch Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Ominous Stitch Podcast. I'm so excited for what we have in store today. We're going to be wrapping up our series on national parks slash forests. I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah. Haunted forests. Haunted forests. Woo. Yeah, you know, it's been a, a wild research ride with all these haunted forests and missing people cases. So our last one's going to be a doozy. I'm so excited. She's been sitting here practicing because, you know, she likes to get the pronunciations yes. down right. So we've been practicing Hoya Bashu. That's our episode. Yay. Hoya Bashu Forest. And with that, we comes the seed, seed stitch. stitch. Yes, our last nature stitch. So if you guys are still working on a blanket for this, this will be the last nature stitch that we're going to incorporate into that. So make as many squares and as many tiles as you want to put up this all together. And it should look really cool. I can't wait to see what everyone's projects look like. Or you can just make one big blanket and mix them all up. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah, I might do. Fun. <laughs> just do a couple rows of seed, a couple rows right? of alpine. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be really and cool. And different colors too. Yeah. I could do that. <gasps> be creative, people. Let us see what you're doing. It's yes. going to be fun. That'll be fun. Okay, Miss Nicole. So what has you in stitches this week? You should go first, but I'll go. I guess I'll go. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever gone to a Mexican restaurant? Yes. Specifically Mexican restaurant. Yes. Well, okay. So I grew up in Texas. So I've had a lot of Tex-Mex, but now we're okay. in Southern California. And they're everywhere. Mexican restaurants are everywhere yes. here. Yes. Yeah. Or or and even pseudo-Mexican, trying to be Mexican, anything with... Cali-Mex. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So when you go to a Mexican restaurant, and, yes. and for me, I love hot sauce. She is a spice queen. I love <gasps> hot sauce. If we ever get cool enough, you mm -hmm. guys help us get super cool so we can go on hot ones because I have a very mild <laughs> tongue. <laughs> yes! Isn't that the goal? I have an incredibly mild tongue. So if I eat anything spicy, I'm like, Bleh! then you are going to die on I will hot die. ones if you try you that. You will rock it. I don't know. I, I watched do. how hot they eat and, and it looks like they're in pain. It does look like in pain. If we ever want to test it, I do have the bomb. Oh, hot sauce. Yeah. oh my gosh. I have it. It has been sitting in my cupboard for probably a couple ah! years. I've been too scared to try it, but I'll try it one day. Okay. I'll be brave enough. Oh my goodness. Okay. But you know, when you walk in and you ask for hot sauce, you usually get either their homemade house salsa, which is always awesome, or like um, Cholula. Cholula, Tapatio. Yeah. Any of those. Sometimes Tabasco, depending on Sometimes where you are. The green like, Tabasco, I can, yeah. I love that one actually. So. Angela and I went to a restaurant when we were down in San Diego. And San Diego. You guys, this is like tens of miles from the border. Yes. Like not even like maybe 10 miles, 13 miles from the border. You got to have some tapatio or something, right? Right. Okay. What did they have? I, I asked for hot sauce for my fish tacos. They came out with, what is that? What was it? Sriracha. Sriracha. <laughs> Or it, was it sriracha? Yeah, it was sriracha. sriracha. It wasn't even the chili garlic sauce. It was sriracha. Yeah, that's the wrong kind wrong of hot sauce. hot sauce. And these people were just not like oblivious. And they, they I mean, they had some good salsa with their chips, yeah. you know. And, and a good cheese dip. Some weird cheese, which I don't usually associate. <laughs> I know, you don't usually get like <laughs> cheese dip. Like a bean dip sometimes, but yeah. not a cheese dip, which was still good. But yeah, sriracha. And, and then they didn't even bother to like come back and ask how anything was until the end and it was yeah i had good. my shrimp tacos were on the raw side yeah my fish was, was probably that night yes poor angela and my fish was frozen um <laughs> so we were we were just reminiscing <laughs> about that today and i was like you know what that was that was terrible so if you own a mexican restaurant or you know yeah. work there please stock up on actual hot sauce for your type of food instead yeah, of type of cuisine have you guys ever gone to a mexican restaurant and been served sriracha this was my of... first time ever having that happen ever that was wild you it guys. was crazy i was so astounded angela's looking at me it was it was hilarious i just my jaw dropped so yeah that's has me in stitches so yeah uh hot sauce connoisseur even not even if you're not a connoisseur just you know make sure you have the right hot sauce for the cuisine that you're serving or sauces anything. yes <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's my stitches. Angela, what has you in stitches this week? Okay, this is a good one. It's I we recently went camping. Okay. And I thought it would be a good idea. We were camping out at a lake mm-hmm. and I thought it would be really fun to see if I could get my dog on my paddle board. Uh-oh. Has has she done this before? Well, she loves boats. Okay. She loves being on the water, but she does not like being in the water. She's okay. not a fan of getting wet. Not we a water dog. We can convince her to get her paws in the water, mm-hmm. but as far as getting her further out to even try attempt swimming, no. She does not want to do that. So okay. She has a life vest, so we Aww. put a life vest on her. And she's not a small dog. She's a pretty hefty dog. Yeah, she's she's a large dog. She's probably about... 75, 80 pounds. Okay. She's, a, she's a big girl. And so I got her on my paddle board. And wow. at first she was just like, what's going on? Uh-huh. But then she laid down and relaxed and she was smiling. What? She has she a big enjoyed, smile, everybody. Oh, she's so cute. And she enjoyed just being paddled around on the lake. Aww. And always made sure we stayed close to shore. And she had her life vest on. I had my life vest on. We were very safe about it, but she Good. loved it. She oh, had yay. so much fun just riding her paddle board. I wish I had pictures, but I was on the paddle board and I didn't want to take well, my phone. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. But oh, that's it was amazing. So cute. Great. Such a highlight from my week. Good doggy. Yeah. Oh, she's dog such a dog. sweet girl. I love my puppy. She's laying down on the couch right across from us. I love her too. She always takes my spot. She does. Because she loves me. Yes. Yeah, she, oh my gosh. Biggest she grin ever. She loves Nicole so much. Good doggy. All right. Well, let's get let's get stitching. <gasps> Is it time? It's time. Let's get stitching. All right, stitchers. So this week we're going to be wrapping up our nature stitches. And so for our last stitch, Miss Nicole chose the seed stitch. Seed stitch. <laughs> She's looking at me like I did. So she has this <laughs> habit of te- She's just cracking up now. So she has this habit of texting me. I want to learn the stitch. I want to learn the stitch. In the she middle has- of the night, I'm looking at Pinterest. Yeah. She has no idea what stitches she sends me. I save so many. Yeah. I'm like, Nicole, we're going to do this one because you requested it. She's like, I did? Did I? I don't remember that. Sure. Okay, so keeping in our theme of super easy stitches. Yay! Do you guys remember how easy the moss stitch was? I love that one. It's a toss-up. Comment in our... You can email us at theominousstitch at gmail.com yes. or you can comment on our on social, any of our social medias. medias. We have them all now. We do. So you can comment on our social medias and let us know if you think the seed stitch is easier or the moss stitch is Maybe easier. Maybe we'll do a poll on our Instagram. Oh! Oh, yeah. yeah, Instagram polls. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so the seed stitch, super simple people. So what you're going to do is you're going to chain an even number. And since we've been doing eight by eight squares, mm-hmm. our magic number is 30. 30 plus one. Okay. Okay. So that one is going to be your turning chain. So you're going to do 30 plus one or whatever even number you want to do plus one. Got it. Then in the second chain from the hook, mm-hmm. you're going to single crochet. Okay. And then in the next chain, you're going to double crochet. Easy. Then in the next chain, it's a single crochet. Single. Okay. So you're just alternating single, double, single, double, single, double. And you're going to go all the way back. Single, double, single, double, single, double. So you don't, the turn chain is, is, do you have a turn chain? Yes. The chain one is your turn chain. Got it. So you're always going to end because it's an even number. Mm -hmm. You're always going to end with a double crochet. Oh, okay. And so when you get to the end, you're going to chain one, which will be your turn chain. Okay. Turn it around. Mm -hmm. You're going to single crochet into that first stitch. Easy. Because that chain one is your chain. Perfect. So you're going to single crochet Mm -hmm. and then double crochet and And then then single and and then double. So easy. All the way across. So I'm going to, it makes a really cool texture. So I'm going to hand this off to Nicole. So I think I chained one. So you're going to single crochet in that very first stitch. Easy. Do you see it? Yep. Single crochet. Single crochet. And I'm not as fast as and Angela. And then you're going. Now I'm doubling. Yes. Double down. And mm-hmm. I keep as simple as this is. And then single. There you go. She's just going. As simple as this stitch is. If you're like me and not paying attention, a lot of times I'll half double crochet because <laughs> I'm not Oops. paying attention to the double. So make sure you do double when you're doubling. 
and single when you single. Easy. So single, so single when doubles. you single and double when you double. So it is a single crochet and a double crochet. When you get to the end, you should always end the row with a double. Chain one, always start the row with a single. So if you don't wind up doing that, then you messed up somewhere. Ooh, but I think I'm doing great. Yep. Single, double, single, double. That's pretty this yarn easy. Is pretty tight. So let me give you some more here. Thank you. That's it for the seed stitch, y'all. It That's is so, so cool. simple. Look at this. It's going along. Yeah, she's just sailing through this one. I could do this one on my own. You're going to turn into a super fast crocheter before you even know it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Again, remember we talked about we have lives. It's like I want to do everything. I want to do all the crochets. Yes. But I can't because we have lives. Because we have lives. We have lives. We, we have, have kids. kids. <laughs> it's your busy time yes, at work. I'm right working now. crazy right now. We have husbands to <laughs> feed. And, yeah, we but have life. One day, maybe when we retire on your alpaca farm. <laughs> yes, and your otters. That's the dream to have an okay. alpaca farm. And there doubled. you go. And then you chain one, turn, and single, single crochet in that first one. Gosh, darn it, you and, guys! This is the easiest, right? And it should be like an alternating pattern because you're turning. Yeah. You're always single crocheting in the double below uh -huh. and you're double crocheting in the single Into below. Single. So yeah. it's going to change that up. So it's going to create this really cool texture. And this is um, double sided. Mm -hmm. So there is no right or wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really cool stitch. Love it. Please continue on with your stitch. Okay. And we're going to start talking about Hoyabashu. Story time. Romania, right? That's Ro where we're going. Romania, Transylvania. Oh, <laughs> I already like where this is going. Yeah, yeah. It's ominous story time. <laughs> everybody Hoyabashu forest Hoyabashu forest in Transylvania oh. okay so the Hoyabashu forest nicknamed the world's most haunted forest <gasps> Ooh. right is located near the city Cluj Napoca Transylvania, mm -hmm. okay. Transylvania in North Romania it is roughly 700 acres large and is also known as the Bermuda Triangle of the country. <laughs> Isn't that neat? I'll explain why. There's there's the, the Haunted Forest, Bermuda Triangle. There's even another nickname I'm going to get into. Okay. There's a lot of things relating into each category of these names. Okay. Now, port part of the northeastern end is bordered by Valean Lunga, which passes through Eocene Limestone. <gasps> Do More you see a pattern? limestone. See people, limestone. limestone. Yeah. It attracts energy. It holds it. It's a sponge. It's amazing. I keep saying amazing. I, that's our word. Oh, amazing. That's my word. Yeah. Take okay. a stitch every time, and <laughs> you can you can translate that stitch to whatever you want it sure. to be. You got it. <laughs> I'm gonna drink some coffee soon again. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, now, what's cool about this forest is the oldest archaeological discovery was a Neolithic settlement believed to be established around 6500 bc oh my gosh yes, so this is a very ancient place wow okay take this with a grain of salt they report that due to the presence of natural uranium studies have shown a higher than normal level of radioactivity in certain parts mm -hmm. now i couldn't find any more research i tried and tried to dig this I up i bet you did and i couldn't find anything so that was just a, like a sample of something but again, there is some rumors just like Aoki Gahara, where compasses, electronics end up not working. Right. So, yes. There you go. Locals report that the animals, so this is just for the skeptics. Okay. Okay. They report that all the animals in the forest are friendly. Aww. Yeah. They also even say that, that most of the locals have not witnessed anything out of the ordinary. Even a retired ranger of this particular forest claims that he had spent many nights in the forest, but never had anything strange happen to him. They're promoting like, no. We're yes. a friendly forest. Yes. Come experience our, okay. It's a happy forest. It's a happy forest. With happy animals. A little ominous. <laughs> it's like the forest animals in South Park. Yes. 
Oh, I love that episode so much. That's one of my favorites. Oh my gosh, it's horrifying. Oh man, yeah. Of course you would love it because it's it's pretty <laughs> creepy. Oh my gosh, we can go into that one. Um, anyway, it's it's a mix. And I even when I when I was looking at the Google like rating of the forest because yes. you can do that. Oh, half of them, and it was all translated from Romanian. Half of them are like, I haven't seen anything. Half of them are like, I've seen something. I'm never going back. Uh, there, I've heard noises and creepy things. I've seen shadows. Yeah, it's half and half. Oh, those are good odds. Right? So yeah. I, I think if you're going into it with a mindset of I'm not going to have anything happen, most likely nothing's going to happen, right? But right. if you're going seeking something paranormal, you'll, you'll find most something. of the time you are yeah. going to find something. But get this. This okay. is insane. Hoya Bashu is named after the shepherd who disappeared into the forest along with his flock of 200 sheep. Oh, my so gosh. So how is that not ominous? That that is not the way you should name your forest. <laughs> if you want to Let's promote it after forest. people that a person that disappeared with 200 sheep. 200 sheep. No <gasps> bodies were ever recovered or found, apparently. Oh, my gosh. So you, na- you name a forest after someone who's disappeared. Uh, something was well fed in there after eating all those sheep. Or another wormhole. And- <gasps> <laughs> oh! <laughs> the, this is where it relates to the Bermuda Triangle of oh, Romania. Okay. The disappearance. Yes. Oh. So more stories about this. So now the earliest, strangest occurrences besides the sheep and shepherd disappearing were another couple disappearances. So okay, I'm not exactly sure when this happened, but long ago, and this is in the urban legend, mm-hmm. a young girl of around five disappeared into the forest only to return five years later, but without aging and in the same dress. What? Yes. <gasps> no oh. recollection of what happened to her. Oh my gosh. She was abducted by aliens. Could be. It's, it's, um, oh, what was that movie? I loved it so much. Flight of the Navigator. Oh, that was yes. a great movie. Yeah, Flight he comes of the back. Navigator. That's right. He comes yeah. back in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what, eight he, years later? Yeah, and, and he didn't is, age. He didn't age at all. That's a good call. I forgot about that movie. Flight That's of the Navigator. Oh, yes. So there you go. We watched it all the time when I was in elementary school. It was like the only movie they would show us when we had good behavior days. Really? Watch they Flight of the Navigator. One. Yep. Well, they chose a good movie. Yeah, it was fantastic. Well, another one is that in the 15th century, another girl went into the woods and vanished only to a reappear which i'm guessing many years later with a 15th century coin in her pocket so this was like why do you have this coin time travel yeah. yes <gasps> or she found it but like yeah she could have found it still, but though. she still came back they she disappeared came back and did she age i don't know but okay. so this is why when you're researching the internet sometimes right. these two stories get mixed together oh okay so. makes sense but i can't i still can't wrap my brain we went through it quickly because i know you have a lot of things that oh, we're going to so talk about in the today. forest mm-hmm. but five years and have has an age yes no no aging five years five years is a long time yeah especially when you're a five-year-old a f- yeah yeah she, that's half her life yeah <laughs> <laughs> math everybody math, <laughs> math. <laughs> okay anyway moving on moving on according to a blog post by night dreamer in the middle ages hundreds of peasants were driven into the hoya bashu forest and slaughtered by a raiding party quote unquote oh no yeah there's no recollection of why this happened and there is history i mean it's it's old 6500 bc so right. there is history of a lot of wars and things happening raiding parties things like that happening but right this one specifically, these peasants disappeared. And other websites state that the peasants went into the forest willingly. But in all of them, they all never return. They're all disappeared. They're all gone. Slaughtered, gone. Well, if they think that they were slaughtered, then they mm-hmm. must have found some evidence or pieces of no, the people left. No, I don't know about that. That's what okay. we're saying. But So we don't know. We just re- know that they went into the forest yes, and, and they're, they're gone. gone. <gasps> and it could be they were slaughtered or they disappeared. But a lot of the speculation of why it's so haunted is because of these peasants going into the forest and never coming out. And so their spirits are like the uterine. Yes. Just stuck in the forest. Oh, yeah. wow. Yes. Just a, a quick thing again, a wide variety of paranormal activity that has been reported through, though, in these woods are witnessing unexplained lights, hearing strange things like whispers in the wind, seeing ghosts and apparitions, and seeing heavy black fog and white mists that move unnaturally. <gasps> I'm going to get into some details about these. Okay, real quick. Can I interject a story about a mist that my kids and I saw? (gasps) When you were camping? No, here. 
Oh, not in our house, but on our street. A That's couple, not cool. A couple houses down from us, there was a mist. It wasn't stuck in the tree, but it was like on the tree. Mm-hmm. And it was a clear day. Oh, and we weird. were walking to school. Mm-hmm. And I saw it, but I wasn't going to say anything to my kids because you know, don't scare you them. don't want to scare the kids. But it was a very obvious mist that oh my was gosh. around this tree. Was it sunny? It was sunny. Yeah, the skies were clear. You know, Southern California, we rarely have cloudy skies. Right. It doesn't rain much. We have blue skies everywhere. And the tree was only like maybe 12 feet tall. So it wasn't that tall. So right. it was a very odd thing to see. Oh, and it didn't creepy. move. It just sat there. So it's a ghost hanging out in the tree. Yes. And so I wasn't going to see anything. But then a couple of my kids pointed it out. And they ah. were like, do you see that? missed isn't that strange and I was like yes it is strange and we just kept and going you moved to on school. yeah <laughs> so you didn't even talk about it or nope just I noticed like, it that's enough for me good job I I understand what that is enough to leave it alone and let it be and just wow. acknowledge that I was saw you was it a you. big tree little tree or? it was a big tree it was kind of like like a topiary kind of like tree oh, okay. they have it shaped like a mushroom top ah, interesting yeah oh wow it was pretty cool okay back to your story I know but that was that got me okay I know okay so I'm gonna try to go to an order of all these different stories some are gonna jump around and I'll let you know but the first one biologist Alexandru Sift born 1936 was intrigued by Hoyabashu and that the trees tend to grow in bizarre zigzag and twisting patterns Ooh. yes but all in clockwise spirals <laughs> right that's interesting yes some trees even have mysterious charring as if they were engulfed in flames. But there's no fires. That's crazy. Yes. There's pictures of this I will post. It's insane. Oh, I can't wait to see. Yeah. There's even YouTube videos. You'll see them. It's it's crazy. You'll see it looks it looks black. Like they were burnt. They were burnt, but, but no fire. Only parts of it. Only parts of the trees. And oh, the trees are growing all big. That's crazy. Cause okay, again, Southern California, we get wildfires. Oh, so many wildfires. And right now is wildfire season. Yes. So, you know, I, I definitely personally have been evacuated from our house a, a few oh. times. Because, you know, we back up to an open space. Right. And there's lots of You're trees. You're very close to the reserves. Yeah. 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 We've seen damage from forest fires. Mm-hmm. We know what that looks like. Right. And so if this looks different from that, yeah. that'll be really interesting yeah. to see. Just a little charring here and there on different oh, trees. that's so crazy. Yeah. Not like a kid went up with a like a little lighter no uh-huh. it looks like definite parts. flame yes. hitting it yeah Ooh. yeah i'll show you some photos <gasps> okay so because one of my children is obsessed with this particular type of cryptid okay dragon you ever know they're in transylvania <laughs> That's a good point. I want to show, I'm going to show Angela real quick because I, I do want her to see. I can't wait. But, I want to see. I mean, okay. There's a twisted trees. Do you see how they grow? They <gasps> twist. That's crazy. Now these, she showed me another picture and these are all, there's a whole grove of trees that are doing like a, a C curve mm-hmm. before they go straight. Mm-hmm. Like right at the bottom. What I don't is know if I can get that? you the charred vi- photos. I'll, I'll have to look for them. But in the video that you somebody. guys, these trees are insane. Yeah. It's, it's, it's. Nuts. trees don't grow this way they don't and that's why he sift came out and he's like i need to figure this out yeah okay they couldn't he he didn't though he didn't figure it out <laughs> it's yeah paranormal yeah so yeah scientists are still baffled to this day to why the trees grow like this and some are really young and mm-hmm. some are over 200 years old so this is not just a, a weird year no. where the trees grew differently no, these are constantly growing constantly changing and they're all doing something different Wow. Yeah. So now either in the 1950s or 60s, any time in those decades, okay. he did extensively study the forest. After his first visits, he reported that he felt as if he was being constantly watched and started seeing unusual shadows. Ooh. At some point, he even captured photos of an unusual metallic disc-shaped device flying over the forest. What? Okay. In the 50s and 60s, way before drones. Yes. So way before drones. not that. No. Leather balloons, but they move slow. Yeah. Anything else moves really slow. These were fast flying metal discs. Oh, that's crazy. So he passed away in 1993. And mysteriously and unfortunately, most of his photographic evidence and work on the Hoyabashu were apparently stolen and destroyed. Oh, somebody's trying to cover this up. Yes. Only a few photos were left. So the ones that, you know, they were, they're everywhere on the internet. Oh, somebody got fired from their job for trying to 
get all the evidence and mm-hmm. they left some behind. Left some behind. Come to our forest. We're welcoming yes. and very happy. We're and happy all of our animals happy little are very forest. friendly. <laughs> happy little animal cr- critters. Uh, oh my Woodland critters. <laughs> all right. Now, jumping around in time real quick. This is where I was talking about. Um, it does relate. So Dr. Adrian Patrut. Did I say that right? Sure. Okay. Petra, sorry, please don't kill me. I, I tried. <laughs> is seen as following in Sift's footsteps and studying the forest because he was a friend of Sift. He's seen in, in a couple photos with him in the forest. Ooh. Now, he's legit, guys. He's Dr. Petra is the current professor of chemistry and chemical engineering at Babesh Boyoy University in cluj Ooh, Look at all those words that you just said. <laughs> She's impressed. That was amazing. I try. I try. And he's also now is the president of the Romanian Society of Parapsychology. And since the 1970s has been studying the Hoyabashu Forest. He is quoted to say, The Hoyabashu Forest is one of the best due to the intensity, variety, and complexity of its manifestations. He also says that when you spend too much time in the forest, you can experience symptoms such as anxiety, insomnia, excessive thirst, nausea, vomiting, and headaches. Wow. Yes. 1970s. That's a yeah. long time to study this forest. That is a long time. I suspect he might have a little screw loose or something by now in his in his brain. Probably from sitting in that forest forever. If he's, he's saying all that's happening to you. Yes. yes. Yeah. This was fun. There's there's an article written by Julia Demon for Metro Canada in 2009. And she actually traveled to the Hoya Bashu forest with Dr. Petrot with a compass, still camera, video camera, infrared sensors and a Geiger counter in tow. She was ready to go. She was ready. And there's I'm going to go through a lot of tales of this. Oh, good. Some of the crazy trees that were gnarled and creepy, Patrick claimed they were normal a few years ago, and he claims that they were are warped now because it is a clear sign of an apparition. So the trees get warped if an apparition comes. That's what he's he's oh, claiming. Oh, but sadly, interesting. After a few hours of searching, they found nothing. So, oh, so she went on this couldn't find anything but i found the coolest stories i actually found an article in romanian that was google translated Uh uh-huh and this was in 2013 and dr petrot was interviewed and he gave his like craziest stories from the forest okay and i couldn't find this anywhere except this romanian website oh wow so here we go so his first one was in 1975 dr petrot went to the forest with a large group of friends he found some ruins in the middle of the forest and took a few hundred photos of them after only two weeks he revisited the forest and tried to locate the ruins again they were no longer there what no one else has ever seen them and with this, after a few years, the photos and the images he took also disappeared. No. In his words, they simply volatilized from my photos. And in this article, there's a photo uh-huh. that they post that looks like it's like it's destroyed by like light and whatever. But it's like his only photo I think he's got. What? Okay. That's just too crazy for my brain. <laughs> now, again. Okay. So I'm going from believer to skeptic here. Right? Let me put my it's skeptic hard. pants on. But this guy's been studying the forest for this long. Yeah, but I think yeah. I think he's perpetuating it could. It a could myth be. at this point. Mm-hmm. Because he's got no photos. Yeah. But he says he went in. I'm wondering if he said he went in with a bunch of friends. So Well, what do the friends say? Exactly. I don't know. Okay. So these made up friends. <laughs> Don't have any evidence either because yes. it magically all got destroyed. Correct. Just like the guy who was, I guess, his mentor or his friend before him Sift. that died. Sift. Photos all of his photos disappeared exactly. and got destroyed. Mm-hmm. I think there's some Skeptic pants? Fish. Yes. My skeptic pants are definitely on okay. here. I that's think okay. he's that's just fair. in this case. Yes, that's fair. I, I think he's trying to perpetuate something mm-hmm. that isn't really there. That's my stance okay. right now. Okay, Angela, that's good. I'm glad you got a stance on the on, on this. So there's three stories. So there's okay. two more. All right. The second is in 1989. Uh, it sounds like they were on a trip with students to the edge of the forest. Okay. Oh. It was a place to rough... students to the haunted forest. Yes. Yay. I mean, he was working at a, at a university, so. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. It was a place roughly 50 meters from the city on the south coast. So you can see the whole city from oh, that's really close panoramic yeah. opening. Yeah. So I've seen a video. I'll, I'll talk about this YouTube video. They show, I think, where they, where they were. And it's amazing. You can see the whole city. It's pretty cool. Dr. Petra noticed a girl very silent in a trance-like state for an hour. 
When she woke for an hour, for an hour. Oh gosh! When she woke up, she said that she had began to see old Cluj more than fifty years ago. Ooh. And not only did she see it, she was able to walk around for an hour through Cluj, like through the city. Wow. Um, she had walked the streets and the boulevards. And as they appeared before the war, which I don't know exactly know which war. I tried to look this up. There's a mm-hmm. lot of history. In right. There. So, but it says before the war. So I'm guessing, what was this like 50 years ago? Yeah. Anyone? Okay. Um, so some students were fascinated, some skeptical. But after her story, they went to the bus. When they went to pay for the bus fare, the girl found in her pocket a silver coin of 100 lei with the face of King Mihai. I'm guessing that's how you say it. And now she didn't have that coin prior to that trip. So a little digging. I tried to dig about what, why would that was special. The 100 right. lei coin with King Mihai were created in 1943 and 1944 <gasps> when she saw the war and it and oh. i believe in the 1950s a new printing system was introduced so it was oh well old that's interesting that's really cool yes so unless she's a good actress and he slipped her the coin before Could be. the trip yeah i've got my skeptic that's good. pants on that's with good this guy. no get those skeptic pants on. i'm giving you the stories that's good okay the last one but if oh. if that isn't the case like that's that's if a you are really a true cool believer story. that's pretty neat yeah but see in my head i'm a little skeptical too because remember that story i told you about that 15th century girl who had the 15th century right coin. it's too much like very that. very similar yes to that. yeah that's that's another reason why my skeptic pants yeah. are our brains are on the same yeah. wavelength here exactly okay last one in 2000 around easter dr petra went into the forest with another researcher from Cluj. all of a sudden he noticed something was flowing from the tops of thousands and thousands of trees oh <laughs> it was a liquid like sap oh and okay. it was flowing from 10 to 20 meters high and gathering at the roots of the trees so Interesting. it's a lot of liquid just flowing right. okay. and it wasn't like flooding anywhere it no, was just coming just from the tree coming from top the, trees, to the bottom top to the bottom which okay so hoya bashu though is known for its very very dry vegetation <laughs> <gasps> so it was very unusual to see these this liquid pouring from the trees. Right. The very well, I think it would be unusual to see liquid pouring from, from a tree anyway. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. But the very next day when they returned, there was no trace of the large amount of sap liquid they observed. The earth was completely dry. Okay. So uh, he was with people. He was with another researcher. Oh, with one other person. Mm-hmm. Okay. And did they take pictures? I have no idea. Probably not. <laughs> and if they did, they, w- they would magically be destroyed anyway? Exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. No trace of that. So, but those were his big three stories when he was in, was interviewed. How many of you have your skeptic pants Probably on? Probably like all me. of you, but you know, it's, it's fun. still interesting it's to fun hear these stories. stories. To tell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, it uh, definitely makes me want to go out and and check out the and forest. Check out the forest, yeah. which is good. Yeah. Returning back in time to probably the most well-known phenomenon of Hoya Bashu and why it's most referenced as Romania's Area 51, oh. besides Sif's alleged UFO spotting. Right. First, let me give you a little geography about what is known as the Poyana Rotunda. Okay. Or translated to the Round Meadow, but it's commonly known to us in English as the clearing the clearing yes that's ominous very ominous <laughs> it is located in the western part of the forest and is sup- a, a supposed dead zone meaning it's it's kind of a circle it's not a perfect circle people keep saying it's a perfect circle no it's not not okay? yes. it's just a very round area where no trees will grow a bald spot in the forest yes okay scientists have been taking samples of the soil like th- through history yes and have no conclusions to why nothing grows besides grass in this clearing interesting yeah there was one theory i came across saying maybe it's like people trying to cut the wood down but there's no there's no No evidence no stumps nothing nothing growing it's just grass but it is grass it's a grassy little area that nothing grows except for grass nothing in the middle of the forest yes wow Yes. And nobody can explain why. Nobody can explain why. On August like 18th. That. Oh, there's more. Okay. Oh, there's so much more. Okay. August 18th, 1968. A military technician named Emil Barnia decided to have a day excursion with his girlfriend and two friends in the Hoya Bashu Forest. They okay. wanted to stop and have lunch in the clearing. Okay. So Emil left them to find firewood to make their lunches. But soon after, he spotted a large metal object in the sky moving unlike anything else he had ever seen. He was able to watch this object for two minutes. 
and able to take two photographs of it as well. <gasps> we have pictures? There are pictures. And his pictures didn't blow up? No. Okay, skeptic pants are off now. Okay. Well, maybe not. I okay. mean, okay, so no, he submitted these photos to the media. Right. And it, it was in newspapers a month later, and it hit media. Oh, wow. Immediately. Okay. And most skeptics did claim it was a weather balloon. Okay. And unfortunately, his claims caused him to lose his job. <gasps> Oh, so at that time, though, as quoted from Sophie Buchan from the the British news website, The Independent in 2017 explanation of this, the communist government equated a belief in the paranormal with madness and state sabotage. And Barney lost his job in a country which had no support for the sack. Oh, no. So but this is the crazy thing. He knew he, what he was risking. Right. He knew that he would when he would submit these probably photos. lose his job. Yes. For believing in so paranormal. He, that was such a strong <gasps> belief. Wow. Right. OK. So skeptic pants are off because like, why would you purposefully say this was a, a UFO? And he's a military right. person. He would know a weather balloon. Right. He would. He wouldn't would, he? He would know. He would know a weather balloon. <laughs> yes. And every military person that that I know, and of course, we're in the US, different very country, different, different yeah. culture. You know, they're they're very skeptical. They're very no, observant. Yes. yes, they know what to look for. They, they know what to look what for. Looking. They're looking for all the angles. Mm-hmm. They assess the situation mm-hmm. very, very thoroughly. Trying to make it as realistic as possible. Right. So they're not given into whims or nope. believing something that might be considered paranormal. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. So poor guy. Yeah, he put all his chips in one basket and just lost his job, unfortunately. Oh, no. Yeah. But this launched Toyobashu into the spotlight around the world. And yeah. Many ufologists and paranormal researchers have now spent so much time studying the Hoyabashu and many back up Barney's claims. <gasps> yeah. We have aliens. Aliens. We all knew there's aliens. Yeah. Guys. There has to be. I mean, there's life out there for how massive the universe is we can't even really fathom how big it is right there's no way that we are the only intelligent life forms in the entire universe i agree we just watched independence day <laughs> yes <laughs> the aliens and that yes oh my gosh i was like you know what we kind of need that it's just so that we can unite reunite the world of how crazy it's been going you know if do we had- you think that we would given how the world is right now do you think that we could come together i think as so. a species yes i think that's what we need i love well <laughs> yes I love your faith in humanity. See, I've got some hope. I love it. But it takes a UFO to do that. (laughs) It would. (laughs) Oh, man. A couple other things. Now, the show Destination Truth. Oh, we're back to this. Yes. Yes. They visited the forest in 2009. I actually remember watching a part of this on TV when that came out. So they even met up with Adrian Petrut to interview him about the Hoya Bashu. Um, They set up base camp at nightfall and set up night vision cameras, infrared cameras, and GPS locators soon equipment starts to malfunction you see that yes. things start to turn that off is a common thing that happens when dealing with paranormal always yep yep and one moment that i do remember watching on tv was when a team member wanted to sit alone mm-hmm. in the clearing oh he suddenly is knocked backwards oh like no joke i watched it over and over again it's not like he faked it, you can't fake the knocking like it is very sudden he's knocked uh-huh. backwards and dragged away oh <gasps> What? He has fresh wounds and scratches through his jacket. Like the jacket's not torn. Oh, it's it's on the inside of the jacket. It's on the inside of the jacket. And then another team member falls ill shortly after. Oh, wow. That's crazy. So those are there. That was the like big evidence that they had there. I mean, again, though, you know, you could be acting, but it's just that extreme fear that you see. Like, right. It's so quick. Right. But. Maybe he's got a, I don't know, it could be so many other things, but that got me. But they did take soil samples back to the U.S. from the clearing. Mm -hmm. An agricultural expert could not find anything abnormal with it. Interesting. More soil samples. I'm kind of working with the theory that the clearing must be where the aliens just kind of land. That's that's their... It's a good theory. The hard part, again, is that I feel like there would be some radioactivity, at least a little bit. Right. And because they're doing soil samples. 
UFOs, yes. they aren't catching, they aren't any catching anything there. like that. So huh. if they're that intelligent of a species where they can travel without using something like that, right? then maybe, you never know. Maybe it was the, it was there a long, long time ago, back in you know, the BC, mm-hmm. they did come, but now you can't find evidence, but just nothing grows around it. So Ooh. I don't know. There's so many theories. Uh, in 2013, Marius Kristen Lazen, he's the head of the Hoya Bashu project. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we have a project. Yes. Okay. But the, the main purpose is to really raise the awareness of the Hoya Bashu forest. It's for tourism. Right. And But to also guide locals and foreign visitors of the forest. I believe it's part of a larger project goal to promote the tourism of right. Romania. Our friendly animals. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but it's pretty clever since Hoya Bashu has gained so much paranormal popularity. Right. Now in 2017... Haunted Earth TV. It's this like little show on YouTube and a blog. It's hosted by this guy named Chris Halton, which is pretty fun. I I watched this YouTube video. He did a whole day and night visit of the forest with Marius Lazen and Tobe. Oh, okay. To help him and some other people within that project and brought a bunch of equipment. (gasps) Okay. Yeah. Now going through the video I watched, there's a really odd part and I'll show you. Okay. But it's a tree where the trunk grows normal. Okay breaks into two trunks oh okay split trunk. then merges back into one. Oh, <gasps> cool yes i want to see this tree yes it's i don't think it's paranormal or anything like that it's just in, it's amazing to see like how these trees grow really different <laughs> than yes. any other trees i've seen i'll show you that that's it's okay crazy and then chris explains throughout the whole video like he can he enters the forest and he feels like something's tingling right okay and later on spidey senses yes and then throughout the video though he just constantly is recording how the atmosphere changes and Mm -hmm. he's like hey do you feel that he's talking to other people and they're like yeah it does feel a little different so take that what you will but things are always changing for him he just feels different atmospheres different pressures things like that throughout the forest what's cool is one of his helpers or one of the people with him she comes with her camera Mm -hmm. it's brand new batteries everything's charged they're drained so quickly that the camera dies oh wow within like an hour or two yep and then yes he records some evp (laughs) towards the end Uh you hear a child laughing (gasps) oh i just got chills all over my body you can hear it clear as day oh again though you know maybe you could add that after but it's creepy oh, it's the way that it, it it's gotcha putting, yes um and then in the middle of the night they're just sitting in the clearing and their equipment is just constantly going off so right you know with our ghost hunting equipment they yes. have ones that you can that light up oh yes so he's talk he's ca- talking to the spirits right and it's constantly like can you do that again and it lights and up lights up and it's just constantly like he's like oh there's another thing and it's just like all over the clearing it's just constantly going crazy oh that's awesome yeah I love that. So that's it for the videos. I'm sure that there's on YouTube. There's a lot of people who visit the forest. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Nicholas Cage actually. <laughs> Did he really? Visit the forest oh, because yeah, they were trying to find something filming to, to film out there. Uh-huh. And he really, really wanted to go out there. I'm sure he did. Uh-huh. He's such a kooky person. Yes, he is. <laughs> My last, last story for you. <gasps> oh, okay. This was just fun because I found this lady named Laura Kalugar. I'm going to say Kalugar. And this is in 2016. She's employed by Yardi Romania. It's an American company that helps with software solutions for real estate based in Cluj, Napoca. But they, they noticed that she, her side gig she did before being employed. Employed, she created a documentary on the Hoya Bashu Forest called The Hoya Bashu Forest Truth or Legend. Okay. Yeah. So she and her crew filmed the forest for a whole year. <gasps> a whole year. Oh, wow. You've got to get some evidence that way. Right. Well, basically, it's she wanted to do it to amp the tourism for Romania. And right. she said she's a huge skeptic. Like right. biggest skeptic there is. But there were two instances where that it made her question the forest. Ooh. All right. One was they were filming on a full moon night and they oh, wanted yeah. to shoot time lapses. OK. Right? But in her words, we shot four during the same night, but one of them was totally ruined and we had no tech technical explanation for the mishap. Cosman is an experienced cameraman and we both had our eyes on the camera the whole time. Oh. Oh, so interesting. Glitched out knowing that they knew how to work their equipment. Just one out of four. 
didn't yeah. work. Wow. So everything was good except yeah. for one it crazy. Just they had no explanation for why. Wow. Okay. The other experience was they had a drone camera flying constantly over the forest. Right. Okay. And on one occasion, okay, they caught a flying object. <gasps> She was insistent that it was not a bird because of the staggering speed. Oh, wow. Flying discs have been going off since. Who was the first one to see the flying disc? <laughs> Alexandra <Yeah>. Sift. Sift. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so maybe he got one thing right. <laughs> yes, one out of many. Well, no, that was that, that was Petra. You were, I think, you're um, the the yeah, chemical pet, engineer. Pet, yeah, that's those were her stories that you found very skeptical. But Alexander right. Sift was the one where his photo evidence yeah. went up in flames. But there's a couple. Okay, there's a couple, okay. there's oh, a there's couple. A couple of them. And he that caught survived. Some, yeah, okay. he caught some disc photos. So he saw the discs. The military guy saw the. Emil Barnia saw the disc. Saw the discs. Mm -hmm. And then this woman this saw woman the This woman saw a disc who <sighs> wasn't even like trying to look for any. She wasn't researching paranormal. She was trying to just promote tourism, make right. the forest awesome. Yeah. And she caught something on camera. This is incredible. So there's your Bermuda Triangle, Area 51 of Romania. I love it. The Hoya Bashu Forest. Definitely aliens. You so think since, aliens? Yeah. So since we're in Transylvania. Yeah. So that's the fun thing. Like there's nothing related to vampires or Dracula. There was some speculation that maybe he did die in the forest or something happened with him in the but nothing like it wasn't really big so oh wow. that's its own separate entity so aliens aliens so this may be haunted but it's definitely visited yes and that's again the disappearances that could be related to the ufos right oh yeah so i love i would the more i researched this forest i was like i really want to go here it's not like aokugahara aokugahara actually scares me because of the whole suicide yes yes that that's creepy for me just you may come across a body this yeah. is like you may come across aliens or right the creepy trees i just want to see how the forest looks and it grows right. i have to show you those photos it's insane don't go in by yourself though that's our story you and her motto buddies. every time yeah <laughs> never go by yourself never go by yourself you're gonna disappear right you may find really ancient money in your pocket which is pretty hey, cool you might get something on ebay for it or you might get to like stay young yeah <laughs> find a fountain a weird fountain of youth in there you get to stay young a time portal yeah a time or, portal or the the navigator right flight of the navigator Maybe he's waiting for you <laughs> for some reason i wanted to sing the never ending story <laughs> <laughs> totally different well, different movie scorch marks may be dragons that's what oh there you know. go that's what you that was your <laughs> it might be dragons <laughs> i just it's i didn't see anything about creatures right which was cool. aliens aliens mists yeah but nothing nothing too scary with teeth right right no bodies no just bodies disappearances yeah yeah, disappearances. And flying discs. Yeah, you might see an alien. Let's Hoyabashu. go. We'll have to add Hoyabashu onto our list. We'll we'll do a European tour. This The Hoyabashu is named as one of the top five haunted forests. Right. And um, so Hoyabashu's on it. The Black Forest is in it. Yes. There's an, like I said, I forgot exactly what it's called, but there's one in England. Which oh, wow. I'm not surprised. Yes. And uh, maybe Akugahara. So we're hitting all the top, oh, top look at us go. haunted forests. So. All right. Is it movie time? <gasps> it's movie time. We've got a great one for you guys. Oh, we're so, so excited. excited. Keeping up with our tradition of dancing. Even though our music we know does not translate to our dancing. <laughs> <laughs> we just like to dance in our head. We do. This episode's movie is The Cabin in the Woods. The Cabin in the Woods. Released in 2011. IMDb rating of seven stars out of ten. Okay. A little, little better. And the synopsis. Five friends go for a break at a remote cabin where they get more than they bargained for, discovering the truth behind the cabin in the woods. <laughs> this is one of my favorite movies. I <laughs> love this movie. Yay! When I told my husband that this was the movie that we were going to review this episode, mm -hmm. he was like, oh, yeah, I'm all over it. Yes! Very different from The Ring. This is one of his top favorite movies. He loves it. 
And he's like, we have a copy of it. I was yes. Like, you do? And he's like, yeah, we watched it before kids. BK. I'm like, well, I don't remember anything before kids. No, so. we don't. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember anything now either. So, you know, it's, it's all a blur. That's all a blur. <laughs> yeah. We have this. I, I was like, oh, yeah, we have this on Blu-ray. We love it that much. Uh -huh. we, we bought the DVD. Yeah, it's so good. Um, when I was researching a little bit about the like what people thought, uh huh, it's really crazy to see how split people are in this movie. Some people hate it. Some people love it. I don't get it. So, OK, I kind of understand the hate because it's not. Oh, you understand the hate? Well, I, I'm <laughs> trying to understand the hate, but I think. Well, I haven't read any of the comments, so good. I don't know. We'll see. Don't do if, it. We'll see if this, we don't need to see haters. We don't need to see haters, but yeah. we'll see if I'm trying to understand their mentality here. We'll see if I'm hitting anything. Okay, go that that they may have brought up, but it's not your typical slasher movie that no. you would expect when you are seeing the cabin in the woods. You would expect. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does follow the tropes mm -hmm. of five friends going into the woods. Right. You know that something is going to kill all of them. Yes. Or try to kill try. all of them. Yep. And it does follow a lot of campy. Yes. Moments. So and we it's have a lot of super to. fun. That's the point. Yes. So I can see some people that were either they were really expecting it to completely follow that vein mm -hmm. and not really do anything different. Right. Or they might be mad that it is campy. I don't. It, or I don't mm, know. It doesn't lean. It doesn't lean the other way. Where sure. It, they the were twist. they were upset that with that twist, it was it was too contrite. They thought it was it was like, oh, well, yeah, there's people, but it, it I, I can't explain it. They just thought it was stupid. Basically, Aww. they thought that premise was not a not a good premise. And that was almost over the top and silly. But well, that's the fun of it, I think. Yes, is that it's really over the top. And it's it's just a wild ride. It's very fun. And I like that there's no happy ending to it either. It's no, just... I really love that part. <laughs> It almost, I was like, do you think they're going to make another one? I was talking to my husband. Do you, do you think they're going to make no, another can't. one? No, they can't. How? Possibly could, or a different perspective of it. Okay. Because, so obviously we're going to give spoilers. The The whole ritual is done annually in every country, like almost all these different countries, right? Right. So we could get a different perspective, like from England. Oh, I see. Or we could see the little Japanese girl. Yes, the very <laughs> oh my gosh. So the cute. very stereotypical. The you you uh this was the Uremi, remember? Yes. And I totally called that out when yep. I was watching it. I was like, oh that's the Uremi. Yep. Yay. Yep. They, I know it's exactly so that funny is. how how stereotypical Japan's were and they had they had the one hundred percent accuracy. Yes. Uh, except this year. Except for that year I thought that was hilarious but yeah I just I love that you start out with seeing the rituals over time like all these different images and you're yeah. like confused if you've never seen the movie I was confused when I first saw it I've seen this many well, times now. it starts off with Bradley with yes. his name West Wing Bradley oh my gosh let me see the stars here for you so Kristen Connolly, Chris Hemsworth, Anna Hutchinson, Richard Jenkins, and Bradley Whitford. Brad Whitford. Yes. Okay. So it starts off with Brad Whitford and I think Richard Jenkins. Yep. And they're having a conversation. They're just two, you know, middle-aged men that are in dressed for the office because right. they're in an office having a regular conversation about their wives and their lives and what's going and they, on. Yep. And families. And, and families. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it's cute and funny, but you're like, what does this have to do with the cabin in the woods like how does this fit in <laughs> and the Am title I of watching the, movie the wrong movie like <laughs> yeah, what's going yes. on this is not what I'm expecting it to right. be about and you know well now we know Chris Hemsworth this was I think maybe something that this launched is, him yeah, exactly yeah. yes it did yeah anyway so we're like you know checking your phone like is this the right movie that I'm casting <laughs> what's going on and then they hit you with the title the cabin in the woods and then you see the typical shot yep. of a girl half dressed standing in her window yep. i'm like put some pants on girl everyone can see you from the street what uh, is going on well <laughs> it was written by joss whedon oh so, yeah so, i get it now yeah there's, there's some cringe in this but overall i mean he he did help write a good movie i'm sorry but yeah um, so he thinks that i think that is necessary in this type of movie get it yeah, yeah get it. i get it yeah. Okay. I was a huge Buffy the Vampire yes. Slayer. Yeah, fan. me too. Um, so okay, you got it. All I, right, I get his. But I think it's also aesthetic. perpetuating her. Like, I mean, even though she didn't have to be, because she is technically in her character the virgin, right? Right. The, the pure. She really didn't need that. It would. It, sh it would have been funnier if it was 
the her friend the harlot i'm gonna say yes the harlot, the harlot. that's a, that's a okay. nicer way to say Got you. if she was the one in her underwear that would make more sense but i get it because it's you know hot chick yes. she's got to be half dressed yes okay exactly. but so. they did make fun of it it did you know, they did chris yeah. hemsworth did come in and say put some pants on yes. and she's like ah yeah and she, that was like, cute she forgot that was cute so but but anyway. yeah it's and i love that they touch base that he is a sociology major on an academic scholarship so this guy is actually very smart even though he plays football okay so there's a character named martin I'm going to call him Shaggy because that's who he is. I love that. Yes, that is. Well, that's what they're trying to do. I believe that homage yes. to All, yes. the stoner. The, the stoner, the yep, fool. The fool. He's the fool in the movie, but he is He's great. amazing. Right? I love him I in it too. I love his character. And I haven't seen him in any other movies. I know. He should he be. so good. Good actor. Yes. Um, but yeah, so you've got the... the, the the American version of the horror story of those five very stereotypical yes, you have, characters. You have the athlete who is Chris Hemsworth. Yes. But in real life, yeah. he is an academic scholar. Yes. He's very... He's well-versed. He's well-versed and he's he, very kind he's to very women. Sweet. He's not. He's nope. not that aggro masculine nope. kind of... And he plays football. That's yeah, great. He does play football, but he's very kind and sweet to yes. everybody and he treats everyone as an equal. Mm -hmm. But... I love what they do when they pick their stereotypes. They start pumping them with chemicals uh -huh. so that, and pheromones so that they start they acting change. like their stereotypes. Isn't that crazy? I love that. Yeah. Like that, that made me so excited because what I love most, the puppeteers, yes. yes. What I love most about this movie is that it acknowledges all of the things that we have to just kind of bridge the gap in our mind mm -hmm. and it finds solutions for them. Mm -hmm. So we have to bridge the gap in our mind like, okay, so the girl who is the harlot mm -hmm. is going to run half naked in the woods. And oh, yeah. I love the scene. We're going to talk about it. So we're like, she's going to run half naked in the woods <laughs> because that's who she is. But they give explanations as to why yes. that why she does that. They put chemicals in the hair dye that lowers her cognitive reasoning. That's what it was. Lowers saying. her cognitive reasoning and ups her like, pheromones. pheromones. And, yeah. And then, Hormones. yes, and so she just starts acting way out of character, and Marty just calls everything out. He's, oh, he's like, so what is wrong with you? It. What are yeah. you doing? And she runs out into the woods, and he's calling out her boyfriend, Chris Hemsworth. He's like, uh, his name is Kurt in Kurt. the movie. Mm -hmm. He's calling out Kurt, and he's like, why are you acting all aggro? You're a sociologist. What's <laughs> going on with you? And he's like, yeah, bro, or whatever. Right. But he pulls her outside into the woods, and she keeps saying, no, I want to keep my clothes on. Let's go back to the cabin, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to do this. And then he's like, no, it's romantic. And then they change the setting mm -hmm. to accommodate her nose so that they're giving her reasons to say yes, yes. so that they can appease the, 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 gods. the ancient ones. Yes. Yeah. It's awesome. I love that all of those little holes that we have to just kind of pass over and be like, okay, mm -hmm. it's a horror movie. It's following these tropes. It's providing you answers for all that. I love that. But the, the whole fact that they have to choose. They do. They have to choose their fate. Even though they're edging them along, giving them everything they can to choose what, you know, in the right direction. Yeah. There still is free will. Yes. So that's good. They're still leaving them. But is some it free, sort of free will, will when there's chemicals being pumped into your head? <laughs> <laughs> it's a gray area. <laughs> I thought that was pretty clever. And in and, and you know what? It's funny is they even give you kind of a guide with the um I don't know who the actor was, but he's the the cop or the the soldier guy that's kind of yes. making sure he's like so why you know he's always asking questions that we have. Yes, yes. So he's the voice of answer. reason yeah. in the organization. Yes. Like why do we have to do this? Yeah. why is this and yeah. the betting made me laugh i would probably bet oh <laughs> my, okay who would you bet on it <laughs> brad whitford is just amazing in this movie He's so good he made me laugh so hard the entire way through mm -hmm. he definitely is in on the kitsch of the whole thing mm -hmm. he played that role so awesome he did it was great so huh? funny mm -hmm. he was so funny it's margarita what oh no tequila is my lady yeah, tequila <laughs> is my lady that's what i want to say that all the time it's a now. good line so funny that's a good line what got me 
though about this movie because even though it's got all this you know background it's still a good horror movie it is right it's still scary yeah there's still plenty of jump scares yes. that will get you and yes. they got me <laughs> good oh. but the ending that's where that the culmination so i'm sure you've seen this movie now but they you know they're not supposed to escape they're all supposed to die in a specific order and in the in the horror movie order yes the harlot dies first right right she's the sacrifice that starts the whole thing right and then her jock boyfriend will get it the fool will get it the scholar Mm -hmm. and um, then the the good guy the good boyfriend he usually dies right before the virgin who may or may not die exactly now my question yes about this whole process was yes. because this is the american version yes the japanese don't have those what do they do right yeah. i don't know they don't, I don't have know a big what their tropes are they don't have a big well we didn't see what their control room looks like exactly so we don't know what their tropes are so is it just the yuremi is it just the one girl that they're hoping creates all that havoc i'm thinking right so since they didn't let the yoremi live on yeah they trapped her soul and the way they were talking it sounded like it was a friend of theirs that turned into right the yoremi yes because when they trapped her soul in the frog right they were like now yes, she can kiko live. <laughs> can live on forever <laughs> exactly. in the frog and be sweet and happy yeah. or whatever so, so the controls interesting and, yeah so the controls it's again, have different tropes so i think it culturally. depends on your culture mm-hmm. And what your horror movies exactly so are like now another question the ancient ones are they different under each because they're huge right right but if because the, the ancient ones are watching the, the Americans <laughs> right yes are there different ancient ones that look different under Japan are there ancient ones that look different are they all look the same and they're just watching each different country like that's where I was like okay what happens like when all that interesting happens? but that was my question I don't know it kind of seemed like that as long as one of the ritual sacrifices worked right then the gods would are be appeased. appeased but that's what I'm so, saying so are they watching all go- the same time I think time? they're watching all of them okay um, is it like this big room like in the matrix where they <laughs> yeah they have the TVs they have all, all the, the TVs. place they can see everything yep. that's going on and they watch the specific ones so. so I think so I think yeah I think so because yeah. they just need one to, to succeed because yeah. everybody else failed and so they were counting on right. America to win but isn't it crazy like you think that you'd have at least three sacrifices wouldn't that appease them but no all no all all five the because the full ritual yeah that's yeah, true ritual full, the okay. full ritual wasn't interesting american one huh yeah now the only thing that got me yes at least every character got stabbed in the back yes. right <laughs> stabbed in the back or a bear trap bear trap yes how are they all running and walking around I, normally <laughs> no i don't know i feel like that would hinder something like there's got to be a nerve that in your back hit. and chris hemsworth like pulling yes and it looked painful but he was still his back running around like, normal you don't pull those out of your back no, like you, you're in so if much you're pain. impaled you leave it there yeah. and you have it medically but removed. you can't but like, if you pull it out you're gonna bleed out bleed everywhere right and if it stays in it, it should it's, keep everything yeah tight. you're keeping everything together but, but he's not bleeding out. all over the floor no no one's bleeding anywhere yeah where's all the blood on your back yeah they should have died way before way they actually died before yeah so that that's where I was like, okay, guys, you gotta redirect you gotta that a little bit. Your, that's yeah. where I think the love of the format comes from. Sure, it's like we're gonna keep this going way beyond belief. Yeah, it's a little bit more absurd in that way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that got me. I was like, she's running around. She got stabbed. He got stabbed. He got stabbed. Why are we all running around? Okay. Yeah. She plunges into the lake. She swims up. Do you She's ever still running around? Okay, so this is a weird thing that I do. Sound off if you do this as well. When you're watching a movie and somebody goes into the lake, mm-hmm. do you hold your breath with <laughs> them until they come out? That's a good question. I think sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. In this instance, I didn't. I do because I maybe I have a fear of drowning. I don't know, but I definitely do. If a car plunges into the uh-huh. water and somebody's trapped in there, I will hold my breath. Aww. Or if they fall in and something's pulling them down, I will hold my breath until they can breathe again. So the and then I start to panic oh my because I'm like, I Holding need your breath. to breathe. Yeah. I have dreams. My mm-hmm. bad dreams or good dreams, it just depends. Always is me in water mm-hmm. and going, I need to hold my breath. So I hold my breath in my sleep. I know <gasps> I do. But oh. then sometimes I start breathing. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can breathe underwater. Those are the good ones. Oh. But yeah, it's a That's reoccurring cool. thing. That's amazing. I don't know why that is. Very Water. interesting. Maybe it's like going back to birth or something. I don't I know. I said the A word, people take a stitch. <laughs> <laughs> you 
did. Back to the ending. Yes. When they're there and they release all the monsters. Yes. And the creatures <laughs> the and, the, and the ghosts and the creatures. And oh my gosh, that's where I, I mean, I love the whole movie, but uh-huh. that's where I got really like in it because I wanted to see every single creature that they release. I was like, oh my God, I got to see them all because you want to see how they kill. Yes. Yeah. We're just like, who's there? Like, yes. Remember they're saying this is where nightmares come from. So, right. And the gods gave them to them. So did they give them every single horror phenomenon like we saw the ghosts we saw a snake which was crazy a big oh, giant that, snake yeah saw the bat we saw the like mechanized creature i remember the ballerina whose the face ballerina was yeah oh the hellraiser gosh. guy yes. the merman yeah, the merman <laughs> the merman Again, brad whitford for the win <laughs> that was awesome that was so good um there's a unicorn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't understand a the creature. unicorn yeah. thing. I was like, what? Yep. We got okay. the torturing people. We got the zombies. We had, yeah. So I was just, that's where. <laughs> zombies are not the same as, as the redneck <laughs> zombies. <laughs> Very different creatures. What was it? Redneck zombies that come to light, back to light or something that like that. That love pain. That love the yeah. pain worshiping redneck yeah, zombies. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. But um, every time I watch that movie now. I actually like hone in when those scenes come so mm-hmm. I can try to catch everything, which is, you got to see every creature I want to see everything the nightmares. Yes. Oh, you're crazy. Yeah. So that was cool. And then the big thing that I, I when I was reading about it, that people just were so in love with was the appearance of Sigourney Weaver as the director. I love her. Yes. Like, I loved that. Who too. better. Right. To get. I got excited. I was like, Sigourney Weaver's yes. in this? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that yeah. was amazing. Um, amazing. Amazing. Take a <laughs> stitch, people. At the end, too, I was with her. The I forgot her care, her name. But I was I was kind of feeling her when she started to point the gun. Yes. At um, the virgin. The, yeah, at yeah. the fool. Yeah. And I was like, would I have done that? Would I have pulled the trigger to save humanity? Or would I be with him saying that humanity is already lost? So there, there's that come back around of that faith in humanity, Angela. Right. <laughs> so based on what you said earlier, you would have pulled the trigger. I probably would have pulled the trigger. I would have felt terrible. I probably couldn't live the rest of my life because I killed my like best friend. But knowing I saved humanity, mm-hmm. I probably it's, would it's have done it. It's the train paradox, right? So if you have a train, okay. there's a switch in the tracks. And on one of the tracks is one person. One or another. On the other track is a group of people. And you only have time to pull the lever to switch the tracks. Do you aim for the one person or do you aim for the group of people? That's insane. I don't know. Because what happens if that one person is like the savior of the world one day? It's Jesus Christ (laughs) on the tracks. It's Buddha. (laughs) No. No, that is scary. I, I don't want I don't want to know how to answer that one. I just know in this hypothetical movie one, Uh I probably would have saved the whole world. I would have definitely saved the whole world. I would have pulled the trigger much sooner. I would have been like, oh, okay, you're going to die anyway. So it's either you die now and I get to live in this horror (laughs) some more. I don't know. Knowing that there's ancient ones underneath you. Yeah. Or, yeah. If you don't kill the fool, there's no rebuilding humanity no it's it ceases gone. to exist it's, it's gone completely gone so but you know like they said let's give someone else a try right do you think that civilization dies and that maybe the ancient ones release a different species to live on the earth right like a what happens if we're a crab people <laughs> <laughs> okay guys i'm getting crab. existential here <laughs> well would they even release would they any type of people or would they say hey we don't have to live underground anymore we get to live above ground so right. let's just take over the whole world. But and that's the whole funny part to me is that why would they even just even let us on Earth? If they why, <laughs> why are they satisfied with staying below? Yes. Is it cool down there? Who made this deal? Do they have like the all the Nintendo systems in the world? <laughs> I mean, like, what's so cool about being below than I, being above, it's right? It's warm. I don't know. <laughs> right? Anyway, fun questions, but... Overall, this movie was amazing. It's I still so love this fun. movie. Even after watching it with all the surprises, it's it, you still rewatch it. It's still a good movie too. Mm-hmm. There's be... there's more to catch every yeah. time you see it. There's yeah. something else to watch. So how many stitches do you give this? This one's gonna be high. Yes. Um, I think we're going with maybe eight and a half. Hey. That might be my highest rating. That's a good rating. It's, it's such a fun romp. Yes. And it's again, it's it's categorized as horror, but because I it, mean it is. It's horror. Yeah. It's paranormal paranormal yeah um because you have all those 
all all the horror tropes, right? Yes, but with a with a fun with a very twist. fun twist on yes. on humanity. There you go. And yeah. yeah, I would give it an eight and a half too. Oh yeah, we share the, the same, same rating. Page. Yes, even if it's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, eight and a half out of ten is is where I it's, give it. That's very high. That's yeah. good. Oh, what a fun episode! Yay! Thanks for joining us. Don't forget, send us your stories. Send us your stitches. Send us anything you wish to the ominous stitch at gmail dot com. Two yes. S's. The ominous stitch. Yes. At gmail.com. Check out all of our social media. The ominous stitch podcast. Check out our YouTube page. We're going to start posting all of our videos of our crochet project so you can see our hands. Keep in mind we're lefties, so it's going to look a little backwards. Backwards stitching. You can get some more content from us uh, talking as we stitch. It's, it's pretty fun. Silly talks. Yeah, yes. We love it, though. We love it. And we love you, listeners. So thank you, Stitchers, for joining us for one more. Thank you. And we'll see you, Stitchers.